Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. A court in Australia is hearing the final appeal of the tennis star Novak Djokovic against the cancellation of his visa. A ruling is expected on Sunday. If Djokovic loses this appeal, he faces deportation and a three-year visa ban. Shaima Khalil, who's outside the court in Melbourne, explains the argument put by Australian's Immigration Minister Alex Hawke for revoking Mr Djokovic's visa a second time. The immigration minister said that he took that decision on health and public order grounds and essentially from court documents that were released yesterday, we now understand that his thinking was that the unvaccinated world athletes' presence here in Australia could provoke anti-vaccination sentiments in the country. His lawyers are going to argue against that. They've called it invalid, they've called it irrational, and they actually say that by deporting him, you could provoke or cause the very thing that you're trying to avoid. The FBI is negotiating with a man who's thought to have taken at least four people, including a rabbi, hostage at a synagogue in Texas. Police at the scene in Colleyville, a suburb of Dallas, say the man is armed. His Nomia Iqbal. During a live stream of the congregation's Shabbat service, a man could be heard having a one-sided conversation in what appeared to be a phone call. He could be heard speaking, at times cursing and sounding angry. It's reported the man said... You got to do something. I don't want to see this guy dead. Moments later, the feed cut out and the video has been taken down. It's unclear exactly how many people are inside. Police said they had made contact with an armed suspect. They say the situation remains ongoing and have told residents to avoid the area. Beijing has confirmed its first locally transmitted case of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 just three weeks before the Chinese capital hosts the Winter Olympic Games. Celia Hatton reports. Just one person has been found to have the highly contagious variant so far, located in the bustling district of Haidian, home to several large universities and technology companies. Areas in Haidian are now facing restrictions like many other cities across China, but this case will certainly raise anxiety levels for the authorities, who had hoped their strategy of mass testing, combined with strict border controls, would keep the virus away from the mainland, at least until the Olympic Games are over. The COVAX scheme, set up to ensure poorer nations are able to access coronavirus vaccines, has delivered its one billionth dose – Seth Berkeley, the chief executive of the vaccine alliance Gavi, one of the scheme's backers, said a plane carrying the shipment had touched down in the Rwandan capital Kigali late on Saturday. He called it a milestone in the largest and most rapid global vaccine rollout in history. This is Moira Alderson with the latest world news from the BBC. Police in Jamaica say they've arrested a former Haitian senator who's a key suspect in the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse last July. Mr Moïse was shot dead when gunmen armed with assault rifles stormed his private residence in the hills above Port-au-Prince. John Joel Joseph, a well-known Haitian politician, was detained on Friday. Police in northern India have arrested a hardline Hindu religious leader in connection with calls for violence against the country's minority Muslims at a conclave last month. Yati Narsinghand is the second person to be taken into custody for alleged hate speeches made at the gathering in the holy town of Haridwar. Some of those who attended are linked to the governing Hindu nationalist BJP. Details are emerging of the powerful volcanic eruption that triggered tsunami warnings across the Pacific Ocean. Images show the part of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapaya volcano above the waterline has now disappeared. Waves more than a metre high crashed into Tonga. Many parts of the archipelago are covered in ash. Nino Ceruti, one of the great Italian designers and fashion entrepreneurs, has died at 91. Best known for introducing casual chic into men's fashion in the 1950s, by the 80s he was designing clothes for many Hollywood stars. Richard Hamilton looks back on the early career of Ceruti. Born in 1930, he learnt about producing fabrics at his family's textile mill, which had been founded by his grandfather in the northern Italian town of Biella in 1881. He dreamt of becoming a journalist, but had to abandon his studies and take over the family business after the sudden death of his father. In the 1960s, he met Giorgio Armani and hired him as a creator. The two of them made a profound impact on the world of fashion. Nino Ceruti opened his first boutique in Paris in 1967. That's the latest BBC News.